So sit up straight. Bring your hands by your hips. Press your fingertips into the floor. As you press your fingertips into the floor, use that to lengthen your side waist, your side chest. Grow taller. Move your arm bones back. Bring your shoulder blades into your back. Keep your shoulder blades pressing into your back as you release your hands to your thighs and close your eyes. Descend your thighs. With equal and even weight, your two sitting bones lengthen up through the front of your body. Press your shoulder blades into your back ribs to lift your chest. Soften your neck and throat. Release your jaw. Press your tongue into the base of your mouth. Take slow, even breaths. And then gently open your eyes. All right, come up onto your hands and knees. Have your wrists directly under your shoulders, your knees directly under your hips. All right, so we're going to play a little bit with hand position today. Um, and how that affects the shoulders and maybe a little bit of foot position and how that affects the hips. Uh, so if it ever gets too intense for your wrist, you can come back to this position or put your hands on a wall. And we're also gonna put our hands on the wall. Everyone will do that. All right, so start with your middle fingers parallel to each other. And press your hands into the floor. Turn your inner elbows forward. So the eye of the elbow is forward. And just see what that feels like. Then turn your middle fingers so that your hands point away from each other. And you still have to rotate the shoulders so that your inner elbows face forward. So there's still an external rotation. It's a little easier to feel here. And then this next one, you're going to turn your hands directly backwards. And this gets a little much for some. So your middle finger, <laughs> you're giving yourself the middle finger. Uh, but the, the point is straight towards your knees as much as possible. And you still want your shoulders directly over your wrist. If that is too much, then you can just turn them slightly back and not all the way back. Then Turn them internally. 
So now the middle fingers are pointing towards each other. This is an internal rotation in the shoulders so that you don't need to turn the eye and the elbow forward. All right. Those are the four positions we're going to play with. All right. So first we'll do them in um, child's pose. And it will help if you have a couple blocks. If you don't, you can still do it without blocks. It's fine. So place your hands on the blocks. Push your hips back, extend your arms forward. Then turn your hands up to the side and you probably won't be able to come down as far with your uh, thumbs pressing into the blocks. This is where uh, it's a little easier on the ground. Now this one is definite. <laughs> you will so turn your hands back and you'll probably just be able to take your hips a little bit back. So you get a really strong stretch in the forearm. And then turn your fingers towards each other and sit back down. All right. Now before we go into downward dog doing all those, we're going to do it standing. So I'm going to be, because I don't like to place my buttocks towards the camera. I think that's weird. I mean, I'll do it once. But um, so your hand, you'll you'll make a an L pose, hands at the wall, making a box. Fingers pointing directly up. Let's see. There we go. All right. Bring your feet together. We might as well have the legs do something here, too. Press your hands into the wall. So both hands pressing evenly. And then lift your left leg up. Keep your hips level to the floor. Extend through your left toes. Roll your left thigh in. Then lower your left leg down. Press your hands into the wall so they're pressing in evenly. And keep that and lift your other leg up. Roll your right thigh in, roll your right hip down. Notice that one hand is a little lighter than the other on the wall. And bring that foot down. Now turn your fingers out to the side so they're pointing away from each other. Feel the difference in your shoulders. And then press your hand strongly into the wall, lift your left leg. Keep your hips level to the floor. Lower your left leg down, lift your right leg up. Lower your right leg down. Then turn your fingertips towards the ground. And you may not be able to move your shoulders so that you're in a, so that you're parallel to the ground with your fingers pointing down. But, do what you can and lift your left leg up. Lower your left leg down. Lift your right leg up. Lower your right leg down. Turn your hands to face each other, the fingers facing each other, so in. And then lift your right, left leg up. Lower your left leg down. Lift your right leg up. 
and then lower your right leg down. All right, step forward and come out. Good way to get some nerve address in a three, warrior three practice in. All right, so this one is typically done with a tilted block. So I could have two blocks like this or like this. Again, you don't need the blocks. Um, it's a little helpful, especially when we get to this position, the, the fingers pointing down. But so that's just to give you some options. We're going into downward facing dog or Vishwanasana. So if I had a block, I would be using my hands. Put my hands up like this, and then coming up. I'm going to show it without a block. So tuck your toes underneath, lift your hips high. This is just a regular downward facing dog. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Kathy, lift your right hip. Stretch your legs. Move your chest towards your cat. Only for Riley. Yes. Oh, no, you can keep your legs down ahead. Yeah, just regular downward facing dog. All right, come down. Oh, I like what Chaya has done. I'm going to show everyone that, Chaya. So, because Chaya didn't want to move to the wall or didn't have a wall, she folded a blanket up and then put the blocks like this. It's a great idea. All right, so I'll show on the second one. So fingers pointing out to the side. And then come up. This may help you get more length in the side of the chest. Uh, for those that hyperextend, which is many of you, uh, hyperextend your elbows, this will show up more here. So uh, I think Laura, you can take your hands a little further apart and you, would, you wouldn't hyperextend as much. Yes, okay. And then the one that everyone likes <laughs> is the fingers pointing down. You may not come up in your regular downward dog in this. This is much harder to do on the floor than with these blocks. So you might have a little bit of a, a humped back or a little shorter dog. So just try that one for a moment. If it's too hard on your wrist, just come down. All right, and then everyone come down. I'm not gonna keep you on that one for very long. And then turn your fingers towards each other and come up. So this one, the fingers towards each other, I've actually always liked uh, more in the handstand position than in dog pose, but it keeps me from hyperextending my elbows. It's just very hard to push into your elbows in this position. All right, and then come down. Okay, so there's also a bunch of positions we can do in Pinchamayarasana or in the prep for Pinchamayarasana. So if you have a strap, get your strap. Belt. And make a loop with your strap that is uh, shoulder width. And I'm going to show the, the different positions. Uh, so if you want to watch for a second, I'll go through them all at once and then we'll do them. So the first one is a traditional uh, Pinchamayarasana position. 
the elbows are directly under the shoulders and the hands are on either side of the block. So the corner of the block uh, points towards the area between my thumb and index finger. My thumbs touch the block and my index fingers touch the block. This makes my middle fingers point forward. And we come up for this one. The next one is palms on the block. You might need to bring your elbows in for this one. So the palms are on the block. And then the third one is the thumbs on the floor with the palms up. Now my thumbs don't touch the floor. They never have, unless someone stands on them. <laughs> but since I don't have anyone here to stand on my hands, that's the third position. All right. So first position, palms down. Your elbows are underneath your shoulders. Thumbs touch the block. Index fingers touch the block. Then tuck your toes underneath and come up. So press your hand, press your forearms into the floor. And as you press your forearms into the floor, move your chest towards your thighs. Even if you have to bend your knees, so your knees are off the floor. Yeah. All right, come down. Now, hands parallel to each other, palms parallel to each other. Press your palms into the block. Everything else is the same. You're still pressing your forearms into the floor. As you try to open up the shoulders by pressing your forearms down and forward to take your chest towards your thighs. Come down. Now. The third one, palms up, and then see if you can get the, ba <laughs> the base knuckle of your thumb on the floor. I can't even do that by pressing my hand <laughs> down, so see what you can do. You, people have different ranges of motion. So palms up, and keep your palms as up as possible. as you come up. And then come back down. All right. So you can come up to kneeling or you can come up to standing. So have the the, the only way to hold the block is this. I mean, you could possibly hold it like this, but we're going to hold it like this. So come up to kneeling or standing and press your palms of the block, have the strap still around your elbows. And then lift your elbows up and take the block back. So now you're, you're still in the same kind of configuration you were. And you can move your arms as far back as they'll go. They'll eventually not be able to go any further. And then come back up. Now, remove the block. You can keep the strap. Press your arms out into the strap. 
and then take your hands back. But keep your arms, my head's kind of in the way, keep your hands far apart. Don't let your hands come together. With bent elbows. If you don't know if your elbows are bent, look at them. Right. And go back down. Stand up. Take your feet hip width apart. Lift your quadriceps, engage the fronts of your legs. Place your hands on your hips, take your elbows back. Lift your chest. Fold forward, bring your hands to your shins, look forward. And then either keeping your hands on your shins or bringing your hands to the floor, fold forward. If you want a more intense stretch, you can grab the opposite elbow. Keep your legs working. Then you fold forward. Place your hands on your hips, elbows to the ceiling, inhale, come up. Take your feet wide. Hands on your hips, roll your shoulders back, lift your chest. For start up, Padottanasana, wide leg forward bend. Exhale, fold forward, bring your hands to the floor. Look forward. And then walk your hands in line with your heels. Take your head down to the floor. And just because it's today's theme, <laughs> we're gonna, you can play with the hand position here. So uh, when you're doing traditional Prasarana Padottanasana, the fingertips point forward, the elbows make a right angle. So you can keep the elbows at a right angle, turn the hands out, turn the hands back, and then I don't know, I don't know, I don't get all the works. So those, those three, the fingers pointing towards each other doesn't do, you can't keep your elbows there. But you can grab the opposite elbow and rest your uh, forearms on the floor. If you're that flexible. I mean, obviously, if you're not that flexible, then the forearms will not rest. <laughs> but you can play with the, the same, now there's no weight, and you can play with those same hand positions here. And just so you know, although we won't do them because uh, they're a little tough, uh, there's um, hand, those hand positions for headstand too. Well, one of them is called headstand too, but uh, headstand as well. So there's one that can make a tripod. There's one where the hands are pointing backwards and the elbows come together. Um, and there's one with the, the holding out still. Something to aspire to one day. All right, bring your hands to your hips. Inhale, come back up. All right, headstand. So, uh, in an Iyengar yoga land, we do, you know, we do tripod headstand uh, generally in the beginning uh, or in all levels classes. Um, if you're used to tripod headstand, and you can stay there for a little bit without pain in your neck, then you're more than welcome to do this version. Uh, this one isn't as easy for me. So I do this version, elbows directly under the shoulders, hands interlocked, like this. So uh, if you're just starting, you'd have a wall behind you to kick up to. So uh, if you're not doing headstand, then go back to 
for whatever reason. Uh, some people don't do it when they're menstruating. Um, you can go back to this one and play with the different head, uh, hand positions. So fingers forward, fingers to the side, hands back. All right, so you all have something to do. All right. Whatever is on the floor, you press into the floor. Okay, so we have two people that have chosen Shirshasana 2. That's been two. Uh, well. So, uh, Leanne, I would like your elbows to be a little closer together. Uh, the elbows mostly, the hands can come too, but uh, mostly the left, yeah, that one. And then Kathy, uh, press a little more with your right hand. Uh, above, uh, abdomen back, buttocks up. Yeah. Okay, and some people are doing headstand prep. That's good too, build strength. Kind of keep pushing through that right arm. You're, you're kind of, that elbow's coming out. Yeah. We will also do handstand, not to worry. All right, come on down. I don't know how long you were there. I was busy watching. All right. So next, hands in. Um, you know, I've never tried handstand at elbows with my hands like this. So because I've never tried it, I'm not going to teach it. <laughs> I just realized that. I, I did it uh, when I was practicing the sequence the other day. I did handstand with all the hand positions, but, but not elbows. So, you measure the distance from the wall to do elbows. Distance of your legs and turn around, place your hands on the floor, come into a short dog, put one foot on the wall, press into that foot, and lift the other foot up. If you can't stay for very long, you can't stay for very long. So try that. Yes. Yes, that's perfectly okay, Leanne. Uh, Marsha, you can also do elbow balance, although there will be a lot of elbow balance coming. Um, yes. All right, so don't stay very long, come down. Because the next one I want you to do, I want you to turn your fingers out. For those that can deal with a little, that have some pain in the wrist, but not a lot of pain in the wrist, uh, two of you I know have a lot of pain in the wrist. This one is a little easier on the wrist. So fingers out. And up you go. But uh, if it's too much handstand at all, then try, imagine, do this. This, yeah. Of a balance with this. All right, and then when you've done that one, I want you to turn your hands towards each other. You may feel like you can't kick up with this, but just see how it goes. All right. Yeah, good job, Bob. All right. Well, guess what's next? It is full arm balance. Um, so the first one, finger, you can either repeat what you just did, or fingers pointing towards each other, I and mean, towards the wall, and kicking up. All right. 
You can use a bolster. Sometimes that helps you pick out. So uh, that's probably best viewed from the side. If you want to, sorry, pop it on here. Just have to turn it slightly. So if you've had enough, I'm just going to show how to use a bolster. You place your hands either side of the bolster, you ram your head into the bolster, and you're trying to keep your back into the bolster. And then, whoops, that's too it. Then you can use that to kick it. That helps many people. All right. So if you've done that and you're still feeling energetic, <laughs> you're going to turn your hands out. So you could try turning out just a little bit or 90 degrees. This one is, uh, I feel like this one is the easiest of them. Um, although if you haven't practiced it in a while or ever, it's hard because anything you introduce is going to be harder. There you go, Bob, right up. Yep. So Riley, you will have better luck kicking up if you keep the, the swing leg straight. Meaning that's the one that goes up first. It's bending just a little bit, you're almost there. But if you keep this leg straight, it has a little more power and can lift you right up. So that'll help. Okay. I think we've had enough handstand. Maybe not Suzette. But <laughs> because there's two other positions. There's fingers towards each other. This one's much harder. And the ultimate in pain and suffering is the fingers. This one I actually need a bolster for because if I don't have a bolster, I hit my head against the wall. And I'd rather hit my head against the bolster. So the fingers point back and you come up. So we're also going to do pinch my rest with a bunch of hand positions. So <laughs> save some strength. Yeah, it's pinch my rest and elbow balance. Okay. I don't think I have any takers, so we'll go right on. Okay, now if you're uncomfortable kicking up, then um, for whatever reason, then, uh, then you'll stay with where we were before. You'll still work on strength. So remember, these positions. So first with the, uh, Fingers pointing towards the front of the traditional, and you'll kick up. Like this. All right. All right. If uh, kicking up is not happening for you, or are you just not comfortable, I mean, it's very hard to do some of these poses, you know, on Zoom. You can just lift one leg in the air. Mary, can I ask something? Sure. Um, since I can't do handstands anymore because of my wrist, and I just do pinch of my yes. are the only variations to that, or I don't have me on camera, but are the only variations this and this? No. So oh. it's the same ones we did before. So first one, we're going to do the regular pinch of my arasana. Oh, OK. Yeah. And then we're going to do the palms facing each other, and then the palms facing the face. OK. Good, thanks. Mm -hmm. So, pick something to do. Yes, that'll work, Bob. <laughs> yes, you can use the wall like elbows like you did before. There we go. Whee! All right. <laughs> okay, come down. 
And now you're going to do the second position with the palms facing each other. Um, here. So either here or kicking up. Try that one. Um, some people like to do this in the center of the room. Uh, I know someone, actually many of you guys know Paul uh, Hallett, who does this in the center of the room with a block. I would not do this in the center of the room with a block. Um, and mostly I'm not doing the center room because I don't want you guys to hear me fall. <laughs> okay. And now the third position is palms up. And the trick with palms up is to keep the palms up because what they'll want to do is turn in. Also, this is a lot of kicking up. Remember to kick up with the other leg. Although using, doing this for the first time, picking up with the other leg is pretty difficult. Yeah. Straight, straight leg, straight leg. Lift from the back of the thigh. Ah, almost. Okay. All right. But just, okay, come down for a second. This will be the, the absolute last uh, kick up we do. But I want you to do something first. Because right is so close. So close. She probably kicks up like half the time. But there's something that's gonna, gonna help her a lot. It's gonna help all of us to kick up. So I want you to lie on your belly and bend your knees. Bend your knees for a minute, because I want you to feel a muscle. Then uh, you can be up on your elbows or you can have your face on the floor. Keep your hips down, but lift one leg up. And then lift the other leg up. And then lift both legs up. And you're going to feel your hamstring muscle work. So with both, my legs don't look like they're lifting, but they are. Um, some people can really lift their legs up in this position that I haven't been able to. But um, you can feel your hamstring working, trying to lift your legs up. So keep that, now straighten your legs and keep lifting from the back of the thigh to lift your legs off the floor. So you feel uh, the back of the leg working. Uh, your leg is straight. All right, so when you come up, whether you're going to do this halfway, like dog pose with one leg up, you know, the elbows down or elbows up, or you can move back and forth if you really want to work the shoulder. So a lot of times when we lift the leg up, we're lifting from the front of the leg. Here I am kicking into that leg, but I want you to focus on the strength of the hamstring Let's see, let's do the other one. Lifting up. And that will help you keep that leg straight the whole time. So one more try, or you could stay in Shalambasana and just do that because this is a pretty sweaty class for uh, not even close to half over. Yeah. Yeah, better. Yeah. This may not work for you, Bob, because of the hamstring tightness. Yeah. So Marsha, keep that leg straight the whole time, a little straighter. Yeah. Good job, Chad. Okay. Something to work on. And now 
or something completely different. Oops. Well, sort of. A little rest, sort of. All right, so I have this for my ankles, uh, tight ankles. So when I sit in Virasana, which is knees together, feet apart, this uh, assists my ankles. So we're going to start in Virasana. And in Virasana, you're on a ton of height. You're going to start with in Dandasana with legs forward. Uh, the English words for those are staff pose and hero pose, vice versa. All right, and then I want you to have two blocks behind you like this, maybe even a blanket. So either Virasana or Dandasana. Uh, Dandasana is staff pose, I suppose. So pick one of those. Let's see what you look like. Uh, and Kathy, I'm, I'm quite familiar with your Virasana, so. <laughs> I would choose Dandasana for you. Yes. I mean, it's good to sit in Virasana anyway. So you can just be in, in Virasana or Dandasana while you watch. Um, I bring my hands back up into my chest, and the first block goes in between my shoulder blades. Um, I do this pose almost every day. I know where the blocks go, uh, so you might have to adjust. You might be like, oh, that's not quite right. You should be comfortable. Second block is here. It can be lower. It can be higher, depending on your neck. And then Interlock the elbows and bring them over their head, over your head. All right. So this can also be done in Dandasana. Dandasana is a little harder. Uh, if you're sitting on a blanket, it will be about the same. All right. So pairing passing. Couch pose. Legs straight, legs bent. Uh, okay. Man, that looks awfully easy. I might go to a higher block. Uh, Chaya, bring your feet together. Yes, press your thighs down. Uh, about feet together. I can't see your feet, but I think your legs are apart. Yeah. That's it, Leanne. That's the pose. Yeah. Those those soft blocks tend to wobble, but that's more what we're going for. We want a really strongly lifted chest. But if you feel like you're getting a headache or nauseated, then uh, you're probably up too high. All right, place your hands on the floor, lift yourself up. Come back down for Shalandasana. Lie on your belly. Uh, locust pose. Bring your hands alongside your hips. Uh, palms up. Now, so first lift your quadriceps to make your legs engaged. And then remember the area right underneath the buttocks, lift your legs from there. Then lift your chest and lift your arms. 
Now don't crank your neck to look up toward the ceiling because <laughs> your head in poses can really think, make you think you're doing a different pose. So um, I remember one time I, I thought my Dhanurasana was pretty good. And it's not bad. And, uh, and I looked at a picture and I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm not up that high. Uh, but it's because I was lifting my head up so much that it made me feel like I was lifting up higher. That story is just to keep you in the pose a little longer. All right, come down. Take a breath. Take your arms out to the sides and the T. Same thing. Engage your quadriceps, lift your legs, lift your chest, lift your arms. Come down. If you're starting to feel too much pain in your lower back, there's a little activity there, but it shouldn't be painful. Uh, stay with one of those. Otherwise, Take your hands forward, engage your quadriceps, lift your legs, lift your chest, lift your arms. Extend through your fingers, extend through your toes. Come down. Bring your hands by your lower ribs. So pretty close to your waist. Now I'm gonna, this is upward facing dog. So because of my body proportions and general laziness, uh, I'm gonna tuck my toes under. You don't have to, you can keep your toes pointing back. That's more classical. Take your shoulder blades onto your back. Press your shoulder blades towards each other. Lift your thighs away from the floor as much as you can. So engage your quadriceps. Keep your shoulder blades coming towards each other then press into the ground and lift yourself up. Ah, yeah, this is, this, we've been doing a lot on the wrist, so you can do cobra instead. Kind of like a sphinx, cobra. All right, and then come down. Now, turn your fingers out to the sides. So if you're doing Cobra, you're going to go to the second hand position, which is palms facing each other, and you can make them into fists. Because if you think of how you would hammer a nail, you wouldn't hammer a nail like this. You're not going to have that much power. So if you're having elbows down, make your hands into a fist, like you're going to hammer a nail in, and you're going to push up like this. All right? Otherwise, you're going to take your fingers out to the side, and go up in the Ottoman Kushwanasana again. Downward facing dog. Upward facing dog. I don't even know my dogs. All right, come back down. Okay, so those that are doing the elbows down are going to turn your palms up like this. Really work on rotating the forearm to get the thumbs down. So when people may suddenly want to be in the cobra pose, turn your fingers towards your hips, lift your quadriceps, roll your shoulders back, press up. This one's actually not that bad. It looks bad, but it's not that bad. It's, bad, it's hard on the wrist, but it's not as horrible as handstand. And then come back down. All right. Bend your knees. Reach back and grab your feet. If you can't grab your feet because you don't, your arms aren't long enough, take a strap around your ankles and then hold each ankle individually like this. Then doing it like this. This isn't, I don't know if you can see that, but. I'm making little uh, um, ankle cuffs. 
your rather than uh, the, the one strap. So either do it like this or grab your feet, roll your shoulders back, lift your legs, lift your chest, look forward, come up into Don Yarasana. Go pose. Uh, Kathy, make sure you do uh, like a ball or something. All right. Does Chatush count? Yes. Okay, good, thanks. Bye. Bye. Come down, everyone. All right, now there's two different ways that this pose is, well, there's many different ways the pose is done, but there's two main ways. And some of you were doing the other way. And I know why you're doing the other way. So if you look at my feet, Dandarasana is done holding onto the feet in the book. When I say done, I mean in the book, in light on yoga, is done like this. But some of you are holding the ankles and you're flexing the feet and you are doing this. So I want you to try both of those. So everyone start with grabbing the feet, toes pointing up, and lift it. All right, now come down, take a breather. Bend your knees, grab your feet, grab your ankles this time. Now flex your feet, so point your toes behind you and come up. All right. And then you may have the answer of why somebody might do this that way. All right. So I'll, I will tell you, <laughs> in case you didn't feel it for whatever reason, you have more power. So just like making your hand into a fist, um, you have more power than having your palms flat. You have more power with your feet. Turn back. This gives you more power in your legs, makes it easier to lift. Now, the reason it's, I think, I don't really know what he was thinking, but in light on yoga, it's like this, because eventually you reach the other way and you grab your toes. I can't do that pose. I've seen it done. Um, <laughs> you grab your toes. And that's why you would start with pointed feet. Okay, so the next pose we're going to do is Parsha Dhyanarasana, which is one of my favorite back bends ever. So you lift up, you lean to one side, you roll on that side, and then you kick into the opposite leg and look towards the ceiling. You come back to center, other side, you should plan ahead and not roll into a wall like I did, and come to center. All right, so roll around on the floor. Now, whichever foot position you want to use is fine. So lift up into Dhanurasana, get as high as you can and roll to the side. Oh, everyone is so happy. All right, and then when you get to the side, stretch with the top arm and leg. And then go to the other side. Really feel the stretch across your neck. You'll feel it more in your neck if you look up to the ceiling. Your head is not resting on the floor, unless you have a reason that your head's resting on the floor, like you have neck problems or something like that. Yeah. Okay, I think I showed it. So come back to center, come down. I think I showed this uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, just some silliness. Hopefully, I don't make too much noise on the <laughs> on this wooden floor. Um, so another thing. So you get to the side, and then you can keep going and come up into tutush. And then come off to the other side. Oops! Watch out for blankets. I don't know if 
Would you guys do that? Okay. You can try it, or you can go back to Parshva Dhanurasana, or if you need a little rest, you can just take your arms out to the side in a T and just stretch the front of your shoulder and your neck. That also is kind of the same thing. You may lose your feet. That's kind of fun. <laughs> Something to do with grandkids, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I hate to inform you guys, but we're pretty much out of time for back bones. Um, um, so, If you want to do Urban Dhanurasana really quick, go ahead. Uh, that's sometimes called bridge or bow, or I forget what else it's called, upward bow. Or, uh, let's get this way. Uh, you can take a break, place it under your hips for this pose that many of you were just in, Tritush Padasana. We got a few takers on Urban Dhanurasana. Hmm. Yeah, so that's full bow. Yeah. Yeah, if you're straightening your legs and traduce, make sure your toes continue to point upward. Yes, and they're not going off the sides. Okay, come on down. Or, or you can stay to choose if you're in the, um, take your in this pose, which is um, the alternative for a shoulder stand. Um, we tend to do long shoulder stands in Ayur Yoga, so we have, uh, we usually use a lot of support. So this is the alternative. And it's this pose and possibly straighten the legs either flat or on another brick. The other brick would be against the wall like this. So we'll show that on the side. Uh, if you're doing shoulder stand, go ahead and get your setup ready. Um, I'll show this. And so the more comfortable version looks something like this. I will show those shoulders in. So let us argasana. This requires a lot of props, so that's why I have that other option for those doing that one. Or some people just use one or two blankets, but uh, it can be part of the neck. It's not hard on everyone's neck. It's hard on mine, so I don't usually teach the, the naked. Shoulder stand. A nice big setup here. And whatever pose you're in, uh, tie your toes up. Or 
forward again, like that. <laughs> you're pressing your upper arm, that will work too. You're pressing your upper arms into the floor. So whether you're being supported by a block or you're doing shoulder stem with elbow support essentially, because there are a bunch of different shoulder stands. You want your upper arms pressing down to lift your body up. So that's true of all the poses that we're doing, you know, all the different uh, poses people are doing right now. So the other thing that's true is you don't want to feel like you're being choked. Now, uh, some people, especially uh, women, feel like they're being choked from their own body. And a lot of that has to do with the height you're on. A lot of that has to do with how you're shaped. And uh, a lot of that, some of that has to do with how much you can get your shoulders underneath you. Um, I've even heard say that some of it has to do with uh, wearing a bra. Otherwise, they're kind of floppy. So, in whatever position you're in, you don't want to feel choked. So one way to do it to get out of that is to move your hips further back. Um, and that will keep you from feeling choked. The other is to press the back of your head into the floor and look up slightly, up meaning towards your forehead. And that will tilt your neck enough that you may not feel choked. Alright. And some people uh, grip their throat and the neck. Uh, that's where they carry their tension. Everyone carries their tension somewhere different. Um, but some people carry it in their neck and their throat. And sometimes it's just a matter of letting your tongue rest in the base of your mouth and softening your throat that way. I mean, that's a good idea no matter what. So that's what the base of the pose does. The neck relaxes, the, the forearm, the upper arms press into the floor. And as far as activity, it's just the upper arms pressing into the floor. The, the rest of it is passive. It's telling yourself to relax. Now when we go up the body, there's different things that have to work. So you, you need to use your back muscles like we did in Shalambasana. You know, when we're lifting our legs and chest off the floor. So if you move your buttocks forward and your thighs back, you'll feel your hamstrings engage. And that will help you keep lifting. So you're not all floppy. Also spreading your toes. Not only gives you something to do, a little something to concentrate on would probably be more accurate, but it engages the areas around the calf. So if it was possible to relax part of the toes and not all the rest of the toes, you would notice that some areas, uh, some toes affect more different areas of the calf. This is just me talking on and on, trying to keep you in the pose a little longer. I mean, I'm telling you what to do, but uh, I think one of the difficulties in these long inversion holds, the main difficulty actually is uh, not getting bored. Uh, when you get bored, you just tell yourself that you're tired. <laughs> or maybe it's just me that does that. That's like, oh, I'm ready to come down. So if you're, you know, if you've noticed, you know, those have a home practice, that your poses tend to be a little shorter during your home practice than they are 
when you're in class. And that could be because no one is talking to you. You obviously don't change strength. All right. Anyone still up? Yeah, a few. All right. Oh, one. All right. Work your way down. If you're on a break, lift your hips. Get in shoulder stand. Take your feet over your head and slowly roll out. Place a brick, or I mean, depending on how flexible you are, uh, Bob can rest his head on his shins. I can't quite go down that far. So you can have a brick or a combination of bricks. But find something to rest your head on. You probably feel a gentle stretch in your hips. back up. Change the cross of your legs. And then come back forward. Then come back up. Uh, reach underneath your left leg. Bring your left heel, if you're flexible enough, bring it into its own thigh. Turn towards your right leg. Same thing. Come forward with head support. If this isn't high enough, you can use two blocks like this. They'll make a little stone hinge. Or maybe if you're flexible enough, you can just rest your forehead on your shin, or you can rest on a blanket. And we're just stretching out the lower back a little bit from the back bends. Jenny Shushasana, head of the knee pose, head of the knee pose. Come back up. Bring it down dasana and then switch sides. Bend your right leg, pull it in. Bring your torso towards your left leg. And
Come back up. Stretch both legs out. Come forward. Pashimachanas, Tanasana, extension of the western side. And come back up. Lie down on your back. Roll your shoulders under, take your arms out to the side. If you're feeling any kind of back tension, keep your legs bent, take your feet apart and bring your knees together. If you're okay with the legs straight, then rest in Shavasana with your legs out. Press the weight of your body into the floor. Soften your neck and throat. Release your jaw. Rest your tongue into the base of your mouth. And use the next few moments to focus on your breath. Deep in your breath. Bend your knees. Support your head as you roll to your side. Roll a little further to your side and use your hands to lift yourself back. Take your arms wide, lift your chest, bring your palms together in front of your heart. Think of something you're grateful for. Namaste. Awesome.